there. I'm Nadira Jamal, hostess of the Belly Dance Geek Clubhouse online radio show. Welcome to this special interview series with some of the instructors from the 2015 Las Vegas Belly Dance Intensive. The intensive, now in its final year, will be held September 10th through 13th at the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. To make sure that you don't miss out on this epic event, visit bellydanceintensive.com. My guest today is Carmelita, who will be teaching Unleash the Beast. Karma is a professional dancer based in Atlanta, Georgia, finally making her way onto the professional workshop circuit. She specializes in American cabaret and Turkish Oriental, as well as some fusion. You can check her out at karmacarmelita.com, spelled K-A-R-M-A-K-A-R-M-E-L-I-T-A dot com. Thanks for joining me, Karma. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about the workshop that you'll be teaching at the intensive? Absolutely. Um, Unleash the Beast Powerhouse Combos and Technique is going to be sort of a all-around package deal for students where we're going to be talking about stage presence, posture, body language, movement theory, as well as actual dance. So we'll be learning combinations and techniques that are fast, slow, experimenting with large movements and arm pathways, hierography, crazy level changes, not exactly Turkish drops, but, you know, some some dropping to the knees, some stomps. It's going to be dancing hard, but not necessarily difficult, just a little bit unfamiliar for people who aren't who aren't used to moving quickly and with unique and alternative movements Mm -hmm. so i love this title unleash the beast can you tell us uh, a little bit more about what this beast idea uh, means in terms of dancing yes the beast is that inner amazon or warrior that's inside every man and woman that you can bring out in dance. Um, Something that I, um, when I was thinking about the the name of the the class and developing it, it was, I don't feel connected to things in classes where, you know, they sell the inner goddess and the, you get in touch with your inner femininity. It doesn't have to be, your feminine side doesn't have to be gentle. It can be strong. It can be just as strong as anything. So for me, Unleash the Beast was, this this powerful entity that's inside all of us that we can bring out in belly dance. And that's not just through, like I said, the, the movements, the actual physical movements, but our posture, the way we carry our shoulders, the way we engage our audience with our eyes and our breath. And so it's just, it's going to be an entire package deal bringing forth this beast. Mm-hmm. I love this idea because I think that we have a tendency to overemphasize the delicate in belly dance, which is definitely a piece of it. You know, that that is a whole, you know, genre of feelings and movement qualities that we can use. But I kind of have this, and this is a personal theory, I'm not basing it on anything, that, you know, because Egyptian was the thing for so long, and everybody was thinking, oh, all these other styles are fake and made up, which (laughs) they're not. Right. Right. Uh, I think that we kind that especially American dancers who specialize in Egyptian kind of over prioritize this tiny, delicate kind of shy and retiring quality when the Turkish dancers were really out there and really going for it. And even if you look at what's being done in Egypt now with things like Rhonda Kamel, she is not shy and retiring. So I I think that it's definitely time to bring this back. And I'm really glad you're covering it. Well, thank (laughs) you. I that's that's exactly the kind of thing that I like to hear from other people. And I want to make it clear, I'm not, you know, bashing the delicate dancers, the feminine dancers. Absolutely. That's that's their thing. And even delicate dancers can take something away from this class. It's, more, it's, it's not only just the movement and we're all not going to have the same hierography when we unleash our beast. It could be a delicate beast, but you're, what matters is being able to own it. And being able to have that passion and that confidence to unleash your beast while still letting it be your own. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I agree with the with the idea of it's for a while this this idea of being subdued on stage has been around for so long that the that just the concept of 
you want me to do what? <laughs> it can be a little bit daunting and intimidating to some people. And so I'm hoping this class will be able to let people get in touch with their with their inner their inner crazy, their inner exciting and passion, the thing that we all have for dance, but being able to embody it. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I love about the Las Vegas Belly Dance Intensive is there are so many classes you can take and we're totally outside of our usual dance communities that this is a safe opportunity to try on all these ideas that maybe might you wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable trying out in your regular gigs or even you know in workshops surrounded by your local competition if that's Absolutely. the kind of scenario you live in so you know if you want to just like drop in for an hour in LA and give this a shot even if you think it's not for you it would be great to try it out Wow, yeah. Now, I love this word that you've mentioned a couple times called hairography. Can you tell us more <laughs> about that? Yes. Um, hairography, I actually heard for the first time from some some burlesque dancers when they were referring to me and they see my videos doing all kinds of crazy hair stuff. They're like, you look like a lion. All the crazy hair things you do, it's 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 hairography because they have chairography and they, they mill words together all the time. And I've, I've started seeing it used a lot in belly dance as well. Um, so hairography is just basically all the cool effects and movements you can use your hair with your music. So, and that's just, that's for anything, veil, drum solos, oriental pieces, fusion. The hair is just as much, as just as much a part of you as the rest of you is, especially the amount of time we put in getting it ready and looking nice for the stage. We want to be able to have its own solo. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, you know, are we covering this in a very general sense, or are you going to be giving tips for different lengths of hair? Yes, absolutely. Um, I have a pretty medium-length, full lion's mane, as they called it, but I sometimes even perform my hair completely pulled back. And you can still use these techniques even if you don't have long hair. It's just, in the class, I'll be talking about which of those is going to um, be affected by which focal point you use. So if you have long hair, you'll want to use your hair as the focal. If you're having your hair back or in a ponytail, or if you have a bob or very short hair, you may use your nose or your forehead, for example, as your focal point. Mm, I can't wait to try this out. Yes. Now, when we come back to this idea of you know unleashing the beast, you know, why is this important? What are some of the benefits of stepping out of our you know, chained beast <laughs> as performer? I would have to say the most important part, I mean, it's all, it's all important, but of course I'm biased. I'm the one teaching it, but I would have to say the most important thing will be people learning how to get a really good firm hold of their stage presence, their stage presence, not someone else's, not mine, but theirs. So being able to unleash this beast will allow them to come out of their shell, so to speak. I see, I see so many dancers beginners, intermediates, advanced, all levels, all styles that I can see how there's something inside of them, even if it's a delicate thing, something inside of them that is waiting to be released. And it doesn't necessarily have to be some kind of energy. It can be something as simple as bring your shoulders back a little bit, open up when you enter the stage, let let people see you, be strong and be, be tall. I, I get it a lot. People think that I'm like 5'9 or 5'11 because of my posture and my presence when I'm on stage, but really I'm only 5'5. Five five. <laughs> and who is this workshop the most appropriate for? Are there particular styles or levels or personalities who would get more out of it than others? I would say so. I would say that absolute beginners may get a little lost in the fray because we're going to be moving pretty fast. We're going to be experimenting with some unique things. And I think it would be best for students who are intermediate, advanced, um, I guess intermediate beginners, ones that already have the basics down, that they can experiment with this interesting layering and movement theories while also knowing the basics of belly dance. Um, As for styles, I like to open it to all styles. I don't do a whole lot of tribal fusion or um, the standard fusions like we see today, but I do know that they can benefit from it because I've taught fusion dancers. And um, mo- the class itself for the Las Vegas Intensive will be pretty oriental geared, but I know that those fusion dancers that will show up will know how to 
how to change and alternate movements to better fit their choreographies. And how did you get interested in this topic in the first place? So I've been thinking about this. It was a, that was a tough thing to, to consider. I think it's partly my personality, partly my past. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and throw it out there. Um, I have a, uh, I have a back issue. I have degenerative discs and, um, I've had two surgeries on my L5 S1. And so it, it, it limits my mobility a little bit. I can't lift more than 50 pounds. I can't go running, which I used to be a runner. So that was, it wasn't entirely devastating until I was told I couldn't do it. And then I was like, Oh no, <laughs> but you know, I can't do back bends. I, there are certain dance things I can't do. And it was, um, it was so frustrating and it's still frustrating because I want to learn all these things. I want to learn aerial silks and I can't, it's just something I'm going to have to hope for and maybe in the next life or just sit back and watch YouTube videos of forever. But this idea of being limited and, and I wanted to be a bodybuilder at one point and now I can't do that. It, it really hurt. It was like, I don't want to be limited, but I know that I have to accept that. And so after my back issue happened, um, which it, the, my first surgery was when I was 17 years old, so it happened pretty soon, um, it changed something inside me where it was kind of like that defiant, you can't tell me what to do, I don't care if I can't lift 50 pounds, I'm still going to be stronger than you in some way. And so for me, this powerhouse Amazon character was something that I became and I'm still very nice. I'm not, I'm not a mean person by any means. I'm still very squishy and soft on the inside, but it transformed my dance performance as well, where I started being strong, showing that I was strong, showing that nothing can keep me down. And now I wear my scar with pride. You know, I, people ask me all the time, what is that? And I'll explain it to them. And they're always so surprised wow the amazing things that you were doing in your character and your personality i would never have guessed that you have this issue and that works for me mm. <coughs> that's one of the things i love of the best about belly dance is you know this is so personal this is not us getting up on stage and you know being somebody else's idea of the sugar plum fairy this this is us and our lives and who we want to be in life exactly. and i love not just that you're bringing that into your own dance but that you're sharing that with us in your workshop too yes <laughs> all right so is there a tip that you could share from your session that dancers could start using right now absolutely um one of my favorite things that i like to talk about a lot of it is very physical and visual. So I was thinking of some, some tips I could offer audio. And um, I think one of the big ones that people can try out right now, super easy, is go inside the bathroom and hold your hands in a V shape above your body. Just like the simple you know, pose we all know how to do. But instead of just letting it hang up there, actively pull your lats down as hard as you can. Your lats, for those that are unfamiliar, is around your shoulder blade area. You should be able to feel a nice tight pull along the sides of your back and, and down the length. And look at yourself in the mirror and differentiate between the two poses. And you'll notice that when you pull your lats down, you actively, you, you squeeze that muscle. You're going to open up your arms a little bit more. You're going to bring your, your shoulders and your biceps away from your ears and create a really nice, pretty space. But it's also going to instantly lift your chest just slightly and your your arms are going to nicely squeeze and you're going to show off that muscle definition and it creates a nice powerful pose. I was doing that while you were saying it and looking out <laughs> of the corner of my eye here in my little home studio and I can see the difference. <laughs> so everybody go try that. All yeah. right. So Karma, what are you the most excited about for this year's intensive? <laughs> Everything? <laughs> um I, everything, I mean, literally, I, but if I had to pick one, it's going to be having the opportunity to share my own knowledge and passion with my friends and colleagues, which, you know, I'm fa Facebook friends with a lot of the instructors that are going and we found out that we were all teaching. It was like, hooray, oh my gosh, you know, virtual high five. But then also being able to just sit in the corner after my class is done and take the next couple classes with my friends. It's, it's going to be a really exciting experience 
I'm not excited for the fact that this is the last one, but it, it is pretty sentimental to me. This was actually the Las Vegas intensive was my first intensive ever mm. a couple years ago. So it's a real honor for me to be able to be teaching and, and saying goodbye. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Carmelita. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you, everybody, for listening. If you'd like to learn more from Karma, you can check her out at karmacarmelita.com. One more time, that's K-A-R-M-A-K-A-R-M-E-L-I-T-A dot com. Or better yet, join us at the intensive. This is the last time that this epic event is going to be held, so don't miss out. You can register now at bellydanceintensive.com. And to listen to more interviews with our fabulous instructors, visit bellydancegeek.com slash Vegas 2015.